Hello and welcome to Pathophysiology of Heart Failure. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So let's talk about what heart failure is and then how it works with the pathophysiology. Heart failure is a progressive decompensation in cardiac function often as a result of a myocardial infarction, maybe a cardiomyopathy, which is a change in the way that the heart shape is usually as a result of hypertrophy, chronic tachycardia, or valvular dysfunction. Basically what happens with the heart is that we have an imbalance between oxygen supply and oxygen demand to the heart muscle, and that results in progressive decompensation and function. So if we were to take the heart muscle here, and this is an illustration at the top of what the heart muscle might look like, and then we break it all down here just to that one heart muscle cell. That's what we see at the bottom there. Notice there's a couple important components to it, the calcium channels and our beta adrenergic receptors, which control how well our cardiac muscle is going to contract. So obviously we need to have those things in check. We need to make sure that our patient is getting an adequate amount of calcium and that we're not having too much stimulation or not enough stimulation of those beta adrenergic receptors. So as you can see, those beta adrenergic receptors are going to be stimulated, which helps to increase our cardiac output in those times when it's needed. However, in our patient who has heart failure, those cardiac cells are going to be not working correctly. And so all this beta adrenergic stimulation is going to primarily increase the heart rate rather than increasing the cardiac output. So now let's break this down even further and take one myocyte. So this is one myocyte that we see here, and you see this at the top. You can see all the different components of the myocyte. Now I'm showing you these different components right now so that you'll understand the picture we're going to see in a moment as to what happens with heart failure. But we have these different components, and these things slide over each other. So when you're taking a look at that M line, the M protein, and then you're looking at those uh, the elastic filaments and those fibers, they slide over each other in that sarcoma. So that's what causes the contraction. Notice the little dropout uh, picture here at the bottom of the page, and it's demonstrating where troponin is on this strand. So in other words, troponin is uh, one of the effective pieces of that cardiac muscle. And this is why when your patient has some kind of cardiac problem, a myocardial infarction, or maybe heart failure with a lot of strain on the heart, we can see elevations in troponin levels as a result of those cardiac cells being stressed. So let's take a look at those myocytes now, and this is just an illustration of what the myocyte might look like. Resting, so we've got those filaments that are uh, over top of each other there. They're kind of in a resting spot. And then you can see and there's room for them to contract and move together, the blue pieces to move together over those red pieces. Now look at the second illustration there with the stretched and you can see that they're stretched out a little bit more so this is what happens when we have a normal volume change in the heart so one of the ways we get the heart to beat harder is by stretching those muscle cells more so we stretch them a little bit more and now it's going to contract stronger than it did before but look at the ones that are overstretched at the bottom of the page now there's not enough overlap between the red and the blue pieces in order to be able to have a strong contraction this is what happens in heart failure is those heart muscle cells become overstretched now we can't have a normal contraction like we'd like to have so what happens? Well, we have a decrease in cardiac output. So as the result of this overstretching, as a result of this uh, incomplete contraction from our cardiac cells, we get decreased cardiac output. That will stimulate this compensatory mechanism of three major components. The sympathetic nervous system, remember we saw those beta adrenergic cells that were innovating those myocardial cells, the renin-angiotensin system, and the aldosterone system. So those three things are going to kick in here and be stimulated for compensation.
The sympathetic nervous system and renin-angiotensin system, those two things are going to cause both vasoconstriction and they're also going to try to increase our blood pressure. So those two components are primarily looking at increasing our blood pressure by causing vasoconstriction and increasing heart rate. On the other side, we have fluid retention from the renin-angiotensin system and aldosterone working on the kidneys, telling the kidneys to hang on to fluid. Okay, now let's look at this diagram from the standpoint of somebody who's dehydrated. If someone's dehydrated and they have a decreased cardiac output, these compensatory mechanisms will work. Vasoconstriction, fluid retention is going to make the patient's blood pressure go up. It's going to work. It's going to be effective. But what if the patient has heart failure? In heart failure, we have decreased cardiac output because the heart can't work any better. So now look at the bottom of the screen and we have vasoconstriction and fluid retention as compensatory mechanisms. So we are telling the heart to work harder because it's going to have to pump against that vasoconstriction and it's pumping faster because of that sympathetic nervous system stimulation. And we're retaining more fluid. So there's more fluid for it to pump and it has to pump through a narrowed vasculature at a faster rate when it's already not working well. So what happens? the heart fails and the heart continues to fail. So this is the vicious cycle that happens when our patients have heart failure, is we have this decreased contractility as a result of those cardiac muscle cells not functioning the way they're supposed to, which causes decreased cardiac output and a drop in our blood pressure, and that causes decreased oxygen to the tissues, Decreased oxygen in tissues, well, the heart is one of tissue, right? So decreased oxygen to the heart, which further decreases contractility and cardiac output. So you see how we get into this vicious cycle? Well, the way we treat this vicious cycle is by those two components on the left. When we see a drop in cardiac output and a drop in blood pressure, our temptation is always, let's raise the blood pressure. Let's give the patient fluids. Let's give the patient vasoconstrictors, so something that's going to increase blood pressure. However, when the contractility is low, the heart's not going to be able to respond. So instead, if we work on the left side of the diagram and increase oxygenation to the heart, put the patient on supplemental oxygen, decrease their oxygen consumption, those kind of activities now we're getting more oxygen to the heart, it can pump better, our cardiac output goes up. If you'd like to learn more about nursing emergencies, please visit us online at the nursingprof.com to learn about how to decrease complications, rapidly detect problems, and implement prompt action in your patients. Thank you for joining me for Pathophysiology of a Heart Failure. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now.